Um, good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Lake Bluff Public Library Board of Trustees to order at 7.05 p.m. We'll move on to roll call. Trustee Friedemann? Uh, Trustee Shaw? Here. Trustee Hayes? Here. Trustee Bird? Here. Trustee Graziano? Here. Trustee Jerk? Here. Trustee Dowdy? Here. <laughs> So can I move to allow Trustee Zaudi to participate in the meeting remotely? I'd like to make that motion. I would second. Oh, oh sorry. Um, I believe this is a voice vote. So all in favor say aye. 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 Any nays or abstain? Hearing none. Hi, Matt, officially. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll please stand. To the Republic, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, hi everyone. As I said over email, my first time facilitating a meeting like this, so um, you know. We'll, we'll all roll with it, including me. I'm sure I'll be laughing at myself more than anyone else, I hope. I think. Um, so any additions or corrections to today's agenda? I would like to strike in number five for the agenda. We will only be doing the member oath of office and not the notarizing. Um, we will uh, notarize the oath with Janie um, at a later date when we have a notary present. Okay, um, do we have to vote on the agenda change? Yes. Okay, I, I, I'm, so can we have a motion to I will accept? Move, I, I will move to um, make this just uh, the oath and do the notarizing later. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Second from Ali. Okay, uh, voice vote. All those in favor of amending the agenda, removing, amending the agenda, removing notarizing of oath, say aye. 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 Thank you, Matt. Got your eye. Nays or abstain. Okay, the agenda has been amended and adopted for today, I suppose. <laughs> um, and do we have anyone here to, to address the board from the public? No one physically in the room or on Zoom? Okay, see, seeing none, we will proceed to uh, agenda item number seven, approval of board meeting minutes from May 16th. Uh, are there any additions or corrections to be made to the minutes? They were in the board packet. Um, did you want to do the oath? Oops. Yeah, I suppose we need to do the oath. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Already. Thank you. Skip right over, public. Back to number five. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Should I stand? Yes, please. Um, so trustee Janie Church was elected in the April election and this is her official oath of office. So Janie, I will read the following statement and you will uh, reply in the affirmative to say that you um, will take on these responsibilities. Oath of office state of Illinois in the county of Lake. I do solemnly swear that I will support the constitution of the United States and the constitution of the state of Illinois and that I will faithfully discharge the duties and of the office of library trustee according to the best of my ability. I do. Congratulations. Thank you so much for your service. We're thrilled to have you back. Thank I'm you, Jamie. To be back. We're glad to have a vice president. <laughs> Officially. Okay. So we're back to the board meeting minutes from May 16th. They were in the board packet. Um, are there any additions or corrections we made to those May 16th minutes? Or any discussion if needed? Discussion. Jenny did a really good job on the minutes. You did. You did. I went back. I was like, oh, here's all the committee assignments. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for these. Yeah. 
So whenever you're ready, um, just let me know if there's a motion to accept those minutes or amend them. All motions are accepted. And do I have a second? So was that Lu Sandy? Thank you. So I worked with someone named Lucy Berg. So on occasionally I might say Lu Sandy. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a uh, motion to accept the bill, second from Sandy. Uh, voice vote. Maybe it's a For minutes? Yeah. Okay. That's my ear. No problem. Trustee Shaw. Uh, yes. Trustee Hayes. Yes. Trustee Berg. Yes. Trustee Graziano. Bye. Trustee Church. Bye. Bye. Trustee Dowdy. Hi. Okay. All right, moving right along to item number eight on our agenda, library director update. Hooray. Thank you. Um, I have included the narrative in your board report packet, as well as the statistics from this last month. May is the first month of our new fiscal year. And so I just want to note regarding the statistics, um, that's why there's only one month of data to be shown for you in that first row of, of statistics. Um, this last month was a very busy month, month in terms of staff, in terms of preparation. May is kind of the calm before the storm when summer reading club begins in June. Um, and yet there was still a lot of great work to be done. Um, one highlight I'd like to share for the board tonight is um, the fact that we sent four staff members to a very prominent local Illinois library conference called Reaching Forward. These staff members um, wrote blog posts on our internal blog to share their learnings and to um, increase the knowledge of others at the library that couldn't attend in person. Um, it has been several years since this conference has been held in person and since library staff have been able to attend. Um, I've included the topics that staff um, learned about, including, importantly, patron privacy, First Amendment audits, things that are um, always important to uh, refresh and to learn about for new and senior members of staff. So um, I just like to acknowledge the board's support of the increase for our professional development fund, um, and it is being well utilized by staff and much appreciated. Um, we have had um, really some successes in communication that I'd just like to say, um, you know, thank you to Martha and Jillian for their work. Um, we continue to see increases in the engagement on our social media. Um, we are actually um, able to plan even further ahead, and that's why we were proud to report that the summer newsletter was in print in homes um, earlier than expected, um, which was a, a wonderful surprise and also just a testament to their great work um, planning ahead and having the capacity to plan. And so um, that was not just their work, but the staff um, of the library that helped review and edit the newsletter. Um, technology updates, there are many, um, and one item on the agenda later in this meeting, we will discuss more in depth, um, but there have been several planning meetings with um, Innovative, who is the vendor of our online software program that we use for our um, catalog. And uh, they provide access through um, a product called uh, Encore and then Sierra. It's both the staff and the patron interface. So every time you log on to your account um, on the patron side that you're using an innovative product. You're, and then on the back end, staff have a whole database of all of the public um, information and we keep addresses and checkout dates and all of that. Um, that is a pretty heavy lift of any software program, hence the heavy price tag that you will see later on in the meeting. Um, and that's why the contract comes to this board. There was a lot of work back and forth with the vendor and the lawyer um, to have it prepared for this, uh, this month's board meeting. Um, but I'm happy to say that um, it is a very strong contract and approved by our lawyer um, to be approved by you all tonight. Um, there were several items that we discussed with CBI. CBI is our vendor that we consult with who um, we don't have in-house IT management. So we work with a company called CBI to do that support for us. 
Among the topics that were discussed include migration to Office 365, um, new technology um, equipment for our staff that work from home. We currently have nine staff, including myself, that sometimes work from home, and five of them have regularly scheduled hours during the week from home. Yet they do not have a library issued device. They have been using their personal device since COVID and prior to that. So um, we've made it a priority uh, to make sure that they have the technology they need to do their work. Um, and so uh, that was something we talked about along with um, uh, a broken computer that we had this past month. And um, that was an unexpected cost, but it needed to be done. We didn't have any on hand technology to replace. Um, so that could be something to discuss for the technology committee. Um, I just want to acknowledge Trustee Graciano in her um, uh, outside of trustee work. Uh, her work at the Park District allowed for a wonderful welcome um, breakfast that I was grateful to attend earlier in my work here back in the early of the year. And one of the conversations that happened at this breakfast was um, to increase the visibility of the library with preschool families. And so I had a wonderful opportunity to attend their end of the school year celebration at the preschool at the park district um, with uh, an on-site story time and conversations with families about library programs and services that are happening over the summer. It's a great partnership that I just want to thank you for um, with your other hat on as a park <laughs> district teacher and um, preschool teacher. Thank you for um, creating those uh, those pathways for connection. Um, there were many, many other highlights that I want to mention, um, but I, I think just for the sake of time, um, I'll share one more thing. Um, building and maintenance has uh, taken my time and attention uh, yet again uh, this month, and um, we are benefiting from some of that work today in this meeting. These uh, new LED light fixtures were recently installed. Um, we removed two wasp nests on the outside of the building, um, and the reason for those entering the building, those wasps were actually entering the building, is because there was a broken filter or a duct work outside, so that was fixed. Um, we had an electrical socket, we replaced filters in the, um, the water fountains that had never been replaced before since the installation. Um, and just a huge shout out to Eliza, our youth services manager, who has been since last summer um, when my predecessor resigned, taken on monthly safety walkthroughs of the building, documented that, um, and she now has officially given that responsibility over to me with some excellent training. Um, so I just want to acknowledge her leadership in the area of building safety and building management. Um, and so with that, um, the only thing I'll highlight with regards to statistics is, again, we are looking to change the format in the way that this is presented. Haven't yet been able to prioritize that, but what you will see is that, especially in the three-year comparisons, um, our uh, circulation continues to be um, free COVID numbers and even increase from that, um, but our door count is still not exactly where we were pre-COVID numbers. So. Um, that's that's on trend with a lot of libraries, just because a lot of people are using the libraries differently, downloading materials, um, using virtual services, or just different priorities. But I do think you know, with our continued outreach efforts and welcoming people to the library, but also meeting them where they are, um, we're able to have some excellent service in the community. So be happy to answer any questions uh, for the director's report. When you do this, when you do revising the statistics, are you going to be setting goals? Like you were saying, okay, we're trying to get more people in, kind of what's a realistic number of things that's been training for people who are coming in the I think that's that goes hand in hand with our strategic plan and our long range grant, uh, planning plan as well. But um, I think with any public library, there is a desire to have more um, people in the building and more usage. Um, we are seeing that increased usage, and yet at the other end of things, summer is our busiest time of year. So I'm actually quite hopeful that our in-building statistics will, um, if you look at our statistics from last year at this time, they were through the roof. It was a huge amount of people that we had in the building, and those numbers returned to before COVID statistics. But 
everything besides summer because summer is our busiest time of year. Um, those numbers are, are a little dipped from before. So I think that's a very um, reasonable goal to set. Um, we haven't set those goals yet. We haven't determined which statistics we want to prioritize to share with you. And there's honestly a little statistic work that needs cleaning up internally with our procedures. What numbers are we keeping track of internally at the youth services desk, upstairs? Do those numbers, what, what stories do those numbers tell? Are they meaningful statistics to keep tracking or can we streamline the process and reduce some of that work? Um, so I, I do quite like statistics because it tells you a lot um, and there's a lot of good work to, to come forward, but um, setting goals is gonna be important. And, and Bella, I'll just add, I think that there's going to be some value in looking at like efficiency statistics because there's only so many staff and so you can only put on so much programming there's only so many rooms where you can put on so much programming you know the outdoor space could only accommodate so many people at an outdoor event so i, I think efficiency or something like that yeah. may also be worthwhile taking a look at That's true. do remember though that because of our agreement with um our uh, school districts we have the access of um, that's true the school the facilities school facilities we wanted to have in the larger programs so yeah that was something i remember talking about with your predecessor um, when i was hired was i was being hired about potential excellent conversations with the schools and i know there's already great meetings that happened this last month in may with the schools planning that for future years so I do have a question about yes. these graphs. Um, yes. Is there some reason you need to go back to April numbers or is because a new program? So there are two sets of statistics. Um, okay. The first, which one are you looking at? I'm, I'm looking at page four. Okay, perfect. So that is just the fiscal year. So that's okay. why it starts in May. Um, and then to zero because we don't have anything in June yet. Correct. Yeah. And actually that shouldn't even be a zero, but that was a spring share issue. It should just be a dot. There shouldn't even be a line yet because okay. we're not in June. So eventually this will show all 12 months. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's growing. It's it's adding to. So the first set of statistics are just labeled FY 23-24. That's just this year. And so that's why there's only, you know, one data point or one set of data points. And then when you see um, page uh, five or section five, the three-year comparison graphs, um, it says three-year comparison graphs on the top, and it, the first one is three-year circulation totals. That's when you can start comparing year-to-year -year data. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for asking. Any other questions? Happy to answer about the director's report. Are there any statistics that are included in this report that you or the staff don't find helpful? Like, are there things that are being collected that don't feel like not that show up on this report but some of our internal internal statistics sheets and actually this isn't a surprise to staff because I know I've communicated this a few times that like oh why are we collecting this data if we're not showing it to the board or if we're not using it in some way then we shouldn't be collecting it um so there are some examples of statistics that I think we don't necessarily need to keep track of but there are also statistics that I think we should be taking um, track of that we're not. Um, for example, um, we don't report out the number of notary uh, interactions and um, notaries that we uh, see in the library. And that isn't transferred over in terms of its equivalent to our reference statistics or our individual interaction statistics. Um, we are in the process of completing our IPLAR report, which is the state required report for per capita funding. Um, and they have definitions for each statistic that they need. It's a very long PDF that you will see in a future board packet. Um, and those definitions, in a lot of ways, they ask specifically how many uses of your meeting room. Well, currently we have a sign up sheet for our meeting room because we're also allowing drop ins for our meeting room. With a potential change of our meeting room policy, we will no longer be allowing drop-ins. It'll be reservation only. So that's one paper statistic that will no longer be needed. Um, there are others, but I'd be happy to share more or provide examples at a future meeting. 
Okay. Okay. Any other questions on the director's report? Thank okay. you. All. Thank you. Hearing none, we'll move on to committee reports. Two committees met in the last 30 days. HR committee and bylaws and policies. So as we've done before, I'm pretty sure um, if the chair is here, I'll ask the chair to provide a quick summary. Um, so for HR, Jenny Graziano, take it away. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you have a lot of thought in um, So if you look on page six, it gives you an overview of our timeline. Um, we talked about it in the last meeting that we are coming up on the director's six month review. And um, so this year, since it's the first year for the director, we're going to be uh, conducting a more extensive review. So uh, it will begin in on July when the director will be completing a self evaluation. And after the self evaluation, that will be shared with the board of trustees. Uh, and in August, we're going to be uh, sending out the uh, Google Forms. By uh, Google Forms, we're going to be sending out reviews to managers, staff, and as well as the board of trustees. And so we will ask for everyone's feed feedback. Uh, and those will be due, be due August 13th. And we're going to take all of that information and compile it so that we can share it with the board and we can share it with the director. Um, we had talked about we wanted this one to be more extensive and Mrs. name was hoping to get as much feedback as possible from um, staff and the board. And also I think the self-evaluation component will give the board an idea of how we can support Renee better. So um, that was why we added that in. So this is um, a new format for us. It's a little updated from what we've done in the past. So I'm sure after we've done the first evaluation, we'll be asking for feedback from people on how the how it went. And um, staff and the board were also working on an email that will explain this and we'll give everyone their dates so everyone can be prepared for when it all comes out. So that should come out in mid July. So is there anything on that? I think the only thing I would add is that because we have a new director, we're doing a six month review and feedback session. We wouldn't normally do this. It's usually an annual event just for people who are new. So we course. usually do a, a mid year um, oh, that's right. Oh, not not so formal. Not so formal. Yes, yeah, just so like, are we on track on yes. goals? How are things going? Thank you. You're, yeah, that's right. That that will happen. So this is a more comprehensive than what normally happens. And then the next one will be will be back in the spring again. So Correct. We'll be back on our schedule. Yeah, yeah. So Renee will get her performance review at the same time all the other employees in the library do, and everything will be for effect for the new fiscal year. Mm -hmm. yep. I just want to thank you all for the work you're doing. Um, also on the job description, um, there's an update to the library director job description, which trustees will receive a copy so as to evaluate um, me in this position compared to that job expectation um, put forth in the description. Any questions from for the HR committee? All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll move to bylaws and policy committee. Allie, take it away. Uh, we met last week um, to discuss two policies that are being recommended to the board for approval today. Uh, the first is the public comment policy, which outlines some uh, concrete guidance for those who like to engage with the board while also maintaining a spirit of collaboration and the invitation to the community to participate. Uh, and then the second was the meeting room policy, which was um, revised by a, a library staff member who consulted with a lot of other policies um, to, well, Renee also shared, um, change some of the ways that things are preserved, um, what they can be preserved for, and then also separating out for a lot of these, the procedure from the policy being different slightly. So not including that necessarily in the policy itself. Um, so there's flexibility in amending procedure where necessary. So both of those are on the agenda later um, for proposal, further discussion, and then recommendation for approval. All right, any questions uh, for bylaws and policy? Again, we'll get into the details of those two policies later in the agenda. 
All right. Um, bylaws and policy committee coming in strong early in the year. Wait up. <laughs> okay. I will go to the Matt. How you doing? Fine. Thank you. All right. Good. Just want to make sure we let you know we didn't forget that you're on. <laughs> okay. Can you see me? Do you have a, a monitor of no. me? Or? I'm we just can this... hear you though. Fair enough. I'm here. The voice of God in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, huh? Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to the revenue and expenditures report. So in the board packet, you will note in section seven, um, it is both the revenues and the expenditures report. Um, I have only a few items I want to highlight from the revenue section. Um, the first of which is our first property tax disbursement of the fiscal year. I want to add that um, thank you to Bettina from the village. I have now been signed up for notification from uh, Lauterbach and Amund. So I see the same update that she sees every time a new disbursement is made. So, and I also have the schedule of when disbursements are made throughout the year. So I'm not surprised when there's a zero in a month and then I have to look into why that is, I will know and tell you all ahead of time. Um, and in fact, since issuing this report, I we've since received, received a second disbursement, but that will be um, populated in the next report for next month. Um, so we are starting to collect revenue through property taxes. Um, I do wanna highlight in the interest earnings, we are starting off strong um, with a first month of interest. Uh, we were conservative in budgeting for the amount of revenue we will receive in our interest. Um, and so I think that's a really great example of um, the fact that it was conservative. Um, this is already almost 10% of what we projected for the year. And it is just the first month. Um, so that is, those are the two things that I want to highlight for the revenue report. For the expenditure report, the first thing I want to identify is the medical insurance. Now, for former trustees, you may remember the conversations we had at previous board meetings about how our accounting firm had provided us with estimates, monthly estimates of what our insurance would cost the library. And then several, many months later, would um, provide the actual cost through invoice. And then um, those numbers would be uh, updated. Well, that was not a up-to-date number. And that, that really challenged me and, and our finance committee in terms of being able to determine actual costs. So since then, the feedback has been given to Lauterbach and Amon that they will be issuing invoices um, on a monthly basis, but talking to Bettina, there is accounting on her end that's needed in BSNA. Um, so we will be um, approximately two months, uh, at least a month in the rears, approximately two months, but it's much, much better. Um, and these will be actual numbers, not estimates than before. So currently there are no costs, medical insurances, but that's not to say there won't be. It's just Bettina has not yet processed that invoice and because the village pays for us and we reimburse the village, that's the reason for that slight delay of about 30 days after they issue the invoice. Um, and then the only other thing that I want to mention in expenditures is that we are spending that maintenance budget. Um, we <laughs> have uh, already spent almost $7,000. Um, I just want to acknowledge our um, handyman service, hand, handy person services. Um, who has provided a lot of support to the building, not only in um, fixing things that need to be fixed, but also updating um, things that need to be updated. And so um, as we knew, there would be a lot of costs to, because there was a year of um, uh, no maintenance to the building. So um, you will see that in this new fiscal year, that will be well utilized and fully spent. May I have a question? Yes. Um, in the director's report, there was a comment about a table breaking in youth children. service or children's. Has that table been replaced yet? So, so that's not the plan. Um, the plan is to go to the friends of the library to ask for two brand new tables um, in the hopes that they could be matching. Um, and in the meantime, that other table was uh, removed through um, one of our gotcha pickups. Um, the, I, the broken one. The broken one. And it was a 
a break that could not be repaired. Um, lots of splintering, it was a danger to kids. So um, uh, yes, yeah, so that was removed from the premises and um, not yet uh, identified a replacement, but we are going to the Friends um, in July for that ask. I've already worked with LFI, our furniture vendor that we use a lot, and they've already given Eliza and I um, pictures and a quote that we'll be delivering to the Friends. Thank you. Sure. Just going back to the property tax revenue. Yes. It's sort of unusual that we get money for from the past years that we get money at the end of May when most of the time the tax is not due to due. Uh, so so th these are people who are prepaid in advance. Yes. And I don't with the new system that you're looking at. Correct. So what I receive is the disbursement report across all the village departments. So I confirm not just what the library's portion is, but I see the disbursement across um, public safety and the police and all of that. So I, I would imagine that is the case. Yes. So everybody received a disbursement, not just the library. So it's not just a change in visibility no. for Renee, right. as far as we can tell. It sounds like this is kind of a, I wonder why people are either prepaying or why that that's a new option maybe i don't i don't know okay yeah yeah okay yeah so i think the other question was and i think you answered it in the director's report is that this there there are a lot of expenses in some of the um uh, services uh, are those just the annual renewals that just happen in May? Yes, I deprioritized one just for yeah. brevity. Um, but the one example I'll share with you is um, the reference services. So, yeah. um, if you go to the expenditure list under library materials in um, kind of four or five lines down, adult reference, e reference, you'll see $10,000 has already been paid. Um, and those are our annual subscriptions to things like um, our EBSCO databases um, and, and so forth. So those are one time, and you can see the, the budget is nearly 50% spent. So um, we knew that a lot of these renewals would be at the beginning of the year. In fact, I just wanna acknowledge Laurence, our bookkeeper who helped me try to figure out which vendor could wait until the new fiscal year, which vendor had to be paid right away. Um, and so if there were some technology uh, costs there too in the um, patron and staff software, that's about 15%. Um, and you'll see our automation software. That's our, that's what the contract is in the board packet. Um, that's due at the beginning of every fiscal year. So we already issued that payment yeah. um, as it will be approved by the board tonight. Yeah. Any other questions about revenue and expenditures? If not, I'd be looking for a motion to accept or motion to approve the expenditures and revenues. Oh, I'll make the motion to approve the uh, revenues and expenditures. Sorry, Ellie, this is you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey. For a second. <laughs> All right, I'll ask for a second. <laughs> I will second. Thank you. Uh, this is a roll call vote. Now I'll turn it to Abby. <laughs> so it's easy for you to keep track of who's saying what. Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Hayden. Aye. Trustee Dowdy. Aye. Trustee Berg. Aye. Trustee Graziano. Aye. Trustee Church. Aye. Trustee Friedman. Aye. So, okay. Our May revenue and expenditure report has been approved. Crowd goes crazy. <laughs> All right, our next thing is check. So Renee is going to walk us through the checks. Yeah, I want to acknowledge that um, when I set up the SNA with Bettina more recently, you know how I had been having issues running the reports and it wasn't saving, and then it was. It turned out that um, a lot of my parameters just kept on resetting. So I would select all the features that would populate in the report, and then I would run the report and they wouldn't save. So Bettina has to create a new um, saved report for me for the checks. That's why it looks different this month. So normally what you see are the invoices, you see the vendor. Right now, all you're seeing are, is the, um, the budget line and the amount. 
So um, I just want to acknowledge that that was a that was an issue on my end, and next month it will be um, fixed. Um, but in terms of the amounts, what I can do is kind of talk you through what I know the vendors are. Um, in terms of maintenance, a significant amount of that has been identified as Gary Levin, um, our handyman um, services. Um, we already talked about the 10,000 with regards to adult reference and e-reference. Um, there are multiple vendors within these individual budget lines um, that will have their checks reimbursed. Um, library furnishings, I wanna highlight and thank this for the support of new furniture in my office. That is some of that um, computer equipment. We did have to purchase a new computer um, and uh, that is reflected here as well. Professional development reaching forward, the cost for that um, conference too. So I apologize for the, um, for the issue with the reporting uh, in this month. So I have a question on the checks. Yes. Because I signed the checks. Yes. And oh, there was a large check for um, truing up yes. the fiscal year payment of um, medical insurance. Yes. And so this is the only month that the library pays for the rear, for the year in the rear, as well as the current year. So it's preparing for the audit. We have some flexibility from the village to be able to issue checks for um, outstanding items that should be charged or services rendered from the previous fiscal year. One of those being the medical insurances because those invoices were sent all together only about a month ago. And so that's why they were included in this month's board packet, but they are not taken out of this fiscal year's budget. They are being removed from, or removed from, uh, debited from, from last year's fiscal year. And that's the goal of the audit is to help us identify what that fund balance is given the entire fiscal year's length of um, expenditures and revenue. And um, so there, we, I, I asked Bettina, I said, is there ever a time where I get the final number, you know, at the end of the budget year, um, everything that's been spent and that the auditors determine that. So um, that is what we, uh, in our relationship with the village, um, they've actually already started the audit process with me, but that is what they work on and then submit a report to you all in the fall. Mm -hmm. So I actually expected, Renee and I had a conversation about this when I came in and signed the check to, and you, did you do second, second signature? Yeah. yeah. So I thought we were gonna see that check appear in the register for this month's reports. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'm a, I'm like a little curious as to why we're not seeing it. I was told by Laurence and Bettina that all the payments made for the previous, towards the previous fiscal year, um, they're made, but they don't populate in the report right. because, because the, the report thing. is just for the new fiscal year. Right, and the report, throughout the months, uh, each month that we meet and we're bored, we're looking at the medical insurance in previous months, maybe moving forward, I'm not sure, help me understand this. They were actually estimated payments. Correct. Right. Yeah. So we were, you know, booking an estimated payment, totally fine, I think, right? And that was being posted. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. the check was written to the village, right? Yes, so um, the invoices that we received are for the actual costs, and then the checks are written as reimbursements because the, the village fronts the payments for those. Matt, I heard you say something. Did you want to well, add anything? I was just going to say, I can, I can help to clarify a little bit. So um, going back to the issue with the rate card, that was not being updated. So we were sort of uh, drawing against an outdated uh, estimate of our rates. We've adjusted for that moving forward. In addition, we've priced in because we set our budgets for two years, we've priced in a 10% year over year growth assumption in those premiums that we'll have for an actual rate card now. The point of all this is we should not run into this issue in the future, or if we do, it won't be a, a, a significant amount. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna back up to the, um, library grants and gifts fund. So flip over your list of checks. 
did we receive an unrestricted or a restricted donation in May of $3,487? Yes, that's the friend's um, donation um, from the late April meeting. And what will it be used for? So I believe in um, last month's board packet, it was the, um, we have new bags that we are ordering um, and uh, um, remind me if you can remember. Oh, go ahead. The parade, um, the vendor for the parade. Thank you so much. Um, a, a movie event with Gorton's. There's a great partnership oh, yeah. that we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, there's another item. Oh, this beautiful AV cart that you see before us. Um, a lockable, very well-designed and organized piece of furniture um, as proposed by Anna. Um, our programming librarian, um, and she's been doing a great job setting it all up and made our lives a lot easier today. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other questions on checks or grants and donations? Usually we, we do the checks on the five numbers. The numbers are in the agenda and those are updated. Okay. I know the report that was issued is is making it a little bit. I, yeah, yeah, that's right. The check numbers usually on the report there, right? Yeah. We've got each itemized thing. Right. The check numbers are on the agenda. That's not the agenda. Sorry. This is the agenda. That's the document summary. Here it is. Right here. Check disbursement. So okay. looking for a motion to approve check disbursement 15620 to 15659. We no longer have that skipped check number because of some process improvement that Renee and the team have implemented. So um, those are the check numbers, 15620 to 15659. I move to accept the May monthly check disbursement of uh, check numbers 15620 through 15659. Okay, thank you, Janie. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Bill. This is a roll call vote. Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Hayes. Aye. Trustee Dowdy. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Graziano. Aye. Trustee Church. Aye. Trustee Friedman. Aye. Okay. The checks have been approved for the month of May. Awesome. Awesome. We're on new business. Rock and roll. <laughs> First item is public comment policy. And it's over to Emily. Sure. Um, so the public comment policy in this board packet uh, outlines what the kind of general guidelines would be for individuals who are attending board meetings. Uh, so to, just to note kind of the operational pieces that uh, the entire public comment section would not exceed 30 minutes in total without explicit consent of the board. Uh, and that individual public comments are limited to five minutes um, until the, unless it is modified by the board president. So the board president could allow for uh, additional time uh, in addition to this, uh, public comments can be provided in three specific ways. So in person at a board meeting, they can be emailed to uh, the library director and the board president by 4.30 p.m. the date of the meeting or submitted in writing and received by 4.30 p.m. the date of the meeting. Um, and those then can be read aloud at the board meeting um, as a form of participation. Uh, in addition, there was some guidelines around Similar to the conduct, user conduct policy, uh, no abusive or harassing language. Uh, if there was any violation that the board president could intervene and ask them to uh, prohibit further comment. Uh, so if it was, you know, something that was either like not relevant or presented in a way that was very hostile, um, this should be reflected in the user conduct policy as well, but they wouldn't be asked not to return to provide that comment. Um, in addition to that, um, we are asking, this is another discussion slash amendment we made in the meeting, is that when a speaker provides public comment, um, we may ask them to state their name and their city of residence um, in the event that they are not 
a member of the community, they are still allowed to speak, however, and they are not required to provide that information. Um, they've declined to state it. However, that will give some guidance to the board on how to proceed in terms of action items based on the commentary that is made. Um, if they do provide that information, we will include their name and their general city of residence, including a summary of what they said in meeting minutes so that the public can access that after the meeting is over. Um, questions? Just a comment. I like that no person may assign their time to another person. That's uh, Mm -hmm. That's yeah, I have a question on uh, ways of commenting. A submission through writing received by four thirty on the date of meeting would that be like someone wants to, would drop it off at the circulation desk yeah, or, or mail? Oh, okay, if we, if received in the mail, okay. I, I think the other thing that I would add, not as a comment on a policy, but kind of like a point of order, maybe. Um, let's just say 30 people showed up. Mm -hmm. um, or even if 10, 10 people showed up and wanted to comment, we could move for that meeting to do a 30 minute public comment period, but everybody gets three minutes. Or we could choose to extend it and still everybody gets five minutes or whatever. So, you know, while this is the standard policy, as it says here, it's oh, like, he's a board president. Okay. Yeah, that we we can as a board decide to modify that on the spot if necessary to allow additional people to comment or a longer comment period. Yeah, and that that was by design. We wanted to enable the board president specifically to modify the amount of time or to truncate someone's time if they were completely out of line or incendiary um, or to elongate time if, if there needed to be more discussion. So everything kind of rolls up to the 30 minute maximum and, and the board president at his or her discretion can modify that as they see fit. Well, I get to ever say reclaiming my time. Just kidding. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Or, or ATM machine. <laughs> All right, so then uh, any other questions on this policy? All right, then I'd be looking for a motion to approve this policy. Trustee Bird motions. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second. Church seconds. And so we, this is a roll call vote. Mm -hmm. Trustee Shaw? Aye. Trustee Hayes? Aye. Trustee Dowdy? Aye. Trustee Burke? Aye. Trustee Gratiano? Aye. Trustee Church? Aye. Trustee Freeman? Aye. Okay, the ayes have it. We have a public comment policy. Okay. Excellent. Okay. On to the next policy. Yeah. Um, and I neglected to mention that Renee is the one who drafted this policy. So. The legwork is all done by her. So thank you, Renee. Thank you, uh, And I believe it was Anna you said that did the meeting room. It was a team led by okay. Anna. Yes. So acknowledging Anna, yes. Martha, and Eliza, um, okay. and myself. Yes. A lot of work on the meeting room use um, policy. Um, and should have said this previously, but the procedure with which we will likely approach the policies is that it is drafted by library staff with a recommendation to the um, committee for review, then recommends amendments, et cetera, and recommends to the board. Um, that's correct. That's and we did talk that. about the chance that, you know, Jenny, I think, brought it up. If there's an idea for a policy or you see another library and they have a policy that maybe we don't have, maybe initial research could be delegated to different members of the policy committee. Um, so that, you know, that certainly could happen too. But yes, that you accurately reflected that. Great. Um, so for the meeting room use policy, uh, there was removal of some of those procedural elements of the policy, which could change based on need or what makes the most sense for staff. Um, in terms of the policy committee's work, we looked mostly at how and who can use these 
meeting rooms. Uh, so differentiating between local non-commercial community groups and nonprofit organizations that can be used for uh, civic, cultural, educational, and recreational purposes. Uh, and that we may reserve the right, the library may reserve the right to deny meeting reviews who do not comply with policies. Um, so that could include those who may violate the library or patron conduct policy. Um, in addition to that, there is a priority list of who may reserve the room. Uh, you can see on the first page. Um, so but the library reserves the right to have priority for library related programs and meetings, uh, which is important, uh, followed by the history museum and then the village. Um, after that would be other government meetings, and then the final priority would be nonprofit organizations. Um, any specific questions? I do. So, what about youth services and the stroke room? We opted to, um, we talked a lot about the purpose of this room and the fact that there are very few public meeting spaces in the community available. Um, we also talked about the limitations of the youth activity room, the lack of technology set up that would otherwise be available in this room that we have available. Um, and also the fact that, um, and I remember sharing this with the policy committee, having the youth activity room available for adult usage, for meeting room usage, actually goes against another policy that we have, which is the safe child policy. Any unattended adults in the youth services area that is not actively using the collection or with children should not be in that space. And that's pretty common you see in libraries to have a policy like that to ensure the safety of the families and the kids in that space. But if we make that room available, we have um, adults without minors accompanying um, in and out of that space. Um, and also that room is frequently utilized um, in terms of like drop-in crafts. We have one going on right now. It's just open and available. They really extend the use of the library space and use that program room to do more in there. The strobe room also, and while I will admit I was not here for a lot of the initial conversations when the development of the room took place, um, it has not been determined at this time that that space is going to be reservable. It can be used by libraries such as um, the knitting group. The knitting group use, is, meets in there, but the purpose of the room is for quiet study and quiet reading. And so um, we talked about the idea that this room is set up to be a meeting room or public gathering, whereas that room is not, and that room has a different purpose. So that room is not reservable. However, the library could, um, with any space in the library, opt in to reserving that space for its own needs. Um, but it is not available to the public um, for reserving in advance. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. It's a good distinction, thank you. Yeah, and then, so the policy, this is, this is a revision of an existing policy, yes? Or, yes. Okay. Um, the first statement that says the non-commercial community groups and nonprofit organizations open to the public. So it's that the organizations are open to the public or that the meeting has to be open to the public? The meeting has to be open to the public. So, and maybe there needs to be some slight uh, changes in syntax. The library spruce room, which is this room, is used primarily for library meetings, but may also be used by non-commercial community groups and nonprofit organizations for the above pur purposes that are open to the public and free of charge. That means all people who reserve this room, any group, it, the meeting needs to be open to the public and it has to be free. It cannot be a group where, you know, there was a recent question, the investment club from the local area. It requires dues paid in order to be a member. That meeting might be open to the public, but it is not free to participate in that group or that meeting. Um, so that is the distinction. And with every request that we get, we have regular conversations about interpretation of the policy because 
There are some groups where it's really plain and really clear, and there are other groups where we need to talk it through a little bit more. So for example, I think Toastmasters have used this room. Um, I don't know if they are a dues paying organization. They are, and under this current policy, they would not be allowed to use this room anymore. They also no longer have their equipment here anymore. They've contacted me, the library, they've closed their chapter of this group um, in the area. So that was a big question we had and a lot of reason why a lot of this work has been done to clarify the use of the room. Um, also the frequency with which people can reserve it. That group had a regular standing reservation and in our soon to be new procedures that will not be allowed. Um, that really limited even the library's ability to use the facilities um, that we had on our property. So I think this open to the public free of charge, if that piece instead followed mm -hmm. the non-commercial community groups and nonprofit organizations that are open to the public and free of charge. So we just need to move this in this phrase to after the Exactly. Library meetings and programs that are open to the public and free of charge. Um, programs, comma, but yes. may be used by local non-commercial community groups and nonprofit organizations that are open to the public and free of charge. For the above purposes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's mouthful. Yes. But um, anyway, I, I just, to me, again, I wasn't sure if both the, uh, the event here has to be open to the public. Yes. And it has to be free. And it has to be free. Mm -hmm. Once the group has reserved this, they can't be done. They, they, they could be um, asked to be moved by the library. They could be. So they could be. Okay. And so that's part of the reason why we have this prioritized list. Okay. So um, they could work even after a reservation. I'll give an example. I spoke to Kathy O'Hara from the museum. They have their museum board here in the meeting room. Um, and she magnanimously agreed to moving their board meeting to their space so that we could have our emergency board meeting. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so yes, yeah, that would be a great example. Yes. yes. Bill, do you think that should be stated somewhere in the policy? And maybe it is, I haven't read, I really kind of focused on the first piece and not so much the guidelines. Does it say anything about under extenuating circumstances, we may ask you to, or maybe um, maybe we don't have to be that. Um, if, but when, then <laughs> in the policy. But I could also put it on the form too. There's procedure versus policy, and so I would defer to the committee and you're in the board. Of course, there's a list of priorities listed, and the reservations will be taken according. Um, so I would defer to the board. I think you should do that just put that on the form. Because I think that people would review the form mm -hmm. and review like, the policy. I mean, there's actually a requirement that they have to read the policy in order to submit their reservation. So it's a download this form or click on this to read this and then check the box that says you agree. So but I also think you would also want to do a procedure out. out we it. did. So like I, I think that might be just the next step. It yes. might already be out. It is. I believe it is. And our procedures have to change a little bit um, to reflect this. And, and honestly, there's been inconsistency across our procedures, which is a lot of why this discussion precipitated because the policy wasn't clear. Well, as a museum member, um, I do appreciate that we're museum is second up. And there was no change to that. That was, that was in the policy. Oh, I do that. Yeah, is it that that where is the reservation we made on the first come first basis that would indicate that okay if it's open and can I have a group I can I can bring them in there so it doesn't specify that you could get bumped um prior to we'll always go in and then Jenny said maybe we put it on the form and then you yes. said there's a part of the form where they are required to read the policy. The policy pops up either in a downloadable PDF or a new website, and they have to click that they have agreed to reading the policy. So are you saying that the policy should include the possibility of 
I think the Getting policy home. is good where it good stands. Where it is. Okay. Um, and that's my recommendation, but I you know, defer to the discussion. I think a, a strong policy is one that focuses on informing guidance while giving you know, the library organization and staff flexibility to come up with procedures. What if our technology or software program changes and we lose the case? I'm not, I'm not saying we will, but um, the procedure itself can change, but the policy stands that these are these are what inform the procedure. I'm I'm neutral on it. A part of me feels like, well, you know, the groups that use it, hopefully we have an effective working relationship with them that they would understand if, you know, hey, the library had to close because we don't have power. You can't have your meeting here. The library has this called a special board meeting to address a, you know, urgent item. Can we you know. And I'll say, you know, as a testament to staff and Anna, who has managed this policy and procedure up until now, um, those calls few and far between are always given and, and really well managed with staff. Um, I, from my recollection, we've never run into a situation where we've needed to make a change and the public has been um, disgruntled. Um, and I think that is because we have always stated this level of priority from the get go. So in making the reservation, people know. It's possible. And, and just, just to also clarify, when the Stro room opens, albeit it wasn't like an official opening an event, people were permitted to reserve it. So this is a change. You know, people Maybe reserved it to conduct an interview in there. There was a sign that said, this is reserved because somebody's conducting an interview in here. It wasn't a library employee. I, I, I don't recall. It may have been before I started or maybe after. Um, the only time it's been reserved is for library business when I was moving out all of my furniture and there was a pickup and I needed a place to store. Have we used it for an interview? For staff? Yeah. No, no. Okay. This, huh. this room is used okay. for the interview. 100% it was used. I was here when it was all I going. believe you. I believe you. <laughs> Um, so, you know, just in case somebody, somebody says, oh, at the front desk, hey, I'd like to reserve the store room. Oh, well, I did before. Well, policy has changed. It's really not set up for meetings. And the previous policy never named the store room in verbatim. Right. It said youth activity room and um, spruce room, but the online form had store room listed. So um, there was, there was um, up in the air questions from... Previous president, foundation, you know, community members, what is the purpose of this room? And so in that conversation, we also discussed this and clarified among staff and procedurally, this is the free community space. We haven't even been comfortable promoting it to the community. I would love to talk about this as free community space with free Wi-Fi to the public. It's, I think it's an asset to Lake Bluff. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have been wary to do that until this was clarified and our procedure is um, firmed up. Any other questions or comments? I was just going to say, this is Matt. Um, Bonnie, this, the instance you, um, you reference is what we wanted to preclude, which was someone coming in and saying, I have an important call, or I have an interview, or I need to study for a few hours. I'm going to reserve this entire public space for myself. Um, and so that was what we wanted to carve out of any sort of um, prerequisite for reserving the straw room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's a good idea because we don't want, that room is supposed to be like open to the public and not reserved for one person to conduct business um, outside of their corporate office or home office. So, um, I think that sounds, you know, as, as I think about it, that sounds like a good idea. I was kind of, a part of me was just processing, like, wait a second, we were allowing people to reserve the storeroom. But to me now, it, you know, it makes sense. If someday we're ever retrofitting this whole building or we have additional space, I'd love to be able to provide the community with focus rooms where they can, you know, be on a be on maybe be on a phone call or be on a zoom in a small private room um or a small work work room um with whiteboards and you know some basic things like that nothing terribly fancy but 
Yeah. We have that need now. We've had that before. Um, that will continue to be, I think, an express need from the community as we look forward to our long range planning. Um, we are also limited with our current space. So I think this helps clarify the purpose of this room versus the STRO room. And um, I'll add that we as staff have clarified internal procedures for the STRO room because as it's been new, and people are just wandering in there, they bring their headphones and they'll might Zoom with somebody, but that's why you may have seen a new, um, beautifully designed by Jill letter or a guide list of guidelines for expectations, positively worded mm -hmm. to state the purpose of the STRO room being a public space for people to read and study and quiet. And if they have technology, that it is silent. So. Um, some of that you kind of work through as you open a new space and you see how people are going to use it. Um, and then on the flip side, this helps us clarify both purposes being distinct. Great. Any other comments or questions? Thank you for letting me process the whole thing. One of the things we did talk about just to clarify is the use of the room by tutors. And there's a lot of tutors and it seems to be a this same ones often they come in and use the library space and then this policy does not allow them to reserve this space to conduct that tutoring. This space, yeah, or screen room. Yes, mm -hmm. but also then the guidelines for the stroke room would also be able to reserve mm -hmm. So in recent history, tutors have been reserving this room for one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Up until currently, yeah. without the policy stating as is, but that's where some of the lack of clarity was um, in terms of how the policy was interpreted and um, the procedures were. So as we state, we talk about um, free and open to the public. And also um, if you go to the restrictions section, you'll note that the spruce room may not be reserved for. And then C is where it specifies and actually gives examples of a lot of groups that have wanted to use our space, um, commercial use, any sort of private use. We don't know if any tutors could do it for free. Right. So they're charging. I do tutor. Right. I don't do it. Right. So mm -hmm. right. That, oh, yes. that applies here. Mm -hmm. okay. But also when we have conversations that, you know, the implementation of this policy, as I know I shared with the committee, um, we would um, deploy the policy in writing, but it, we still need time to issue our procedures. And because the reservation of rooms is 30 days out, it gives us ample time before the new school year to be able to communicate with those people, the regular tutors that we've established rapport with, let them know about the change of the policy. They can go upstairs to our computer bar on the second floor. They often do actually. They could um, sit at one of our study tables on the first floor or out in the youth services space. So there are other places for them, but not for this free public space. Is the table still just outside the elevator on the second floor? There's a table. There was a table there recently mm -hmm. with two chairs. It's no. not. Oh, okay. um, the book bike currently is there. Up on the second floor. Yeah, I was gonna say that's one of the tables we've got. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah, okay. okay, great. So we, we found a way to get the bike in and out of the elevator because the book bike's in use every farm is murder, right? Yeah, okay. it's working. All right, awesome. Sorry about the tangent. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? No further questions or comments. All right, do I have a motion to accept the new meeting room policy? As amended. As amended, just with the clarification. There's really, yeah. there's no nothing new added. It's just restructuring that sentence in hopes of making it more clear. I will move the, uh, that we accept the uh, new policy for the new use okay. with the clarification. In the first area. Thank you, Trustee Church. Do I have a second? Thank you, Trustee Berg. Um, this is a roll call vote. Oh. Trustee Shaw. Yes. Trustee Hayes. Aye. Trustee Dowdy. Aye. Trustee Berg. Aye. Trustee Graziano. Aye. Trustee Church. Aye.
Trustee Friedman, aye. Hey, the policy has been adopted. Policy has been adopted with uh, one clarifying amendment. Excellent. We're on to the Sierra three-year contract, which Renee is going to give us um, an overview of. If anybody, we've been here an hour. If anybody wants to stand up and stretch or have treats, thank you, Jenny. Okay. You're not going to do so while Renee talks about the Sierra. Yes. The library was ending our current 10-year contract with Sierra, and this contract means that we had to enter into a new contract with our vendor. Uh, the, the vendor is actually innovative, so that's my mistake, but it is for a product called Sierra. And um, there has been interest among staff to see if we could find a different ILS or a different program, software program in our catalog or even join a local consortium that would reduce the need to host our own ILS on site. So right now we are a standalone library when it comes to our catalog. Um, we are not part of a consortium that shares that online catalog. And so therefore we need our own separate contract. Um, this current year, 2023-24, is the last year of that 10-year contract, and so therefore um, I began the conversations with Innovative to explore um, giving us a little bit more time to figure out what our next step is in terms of that important piece of software. Are we going to investigate joining a consortium like CCS where there is an integrated catalog amongst all library, a lot of libraries that participate, and we would share a cost of the contract for that ILS. Would we um, enter into another 10-year, uh, or I would recommend five-year contract with um, Innovative? Um, 10 years is a long time now for any contract with technology. So um, that's uh, another thing I would uh, just mention that these, the three-year contract you're currently being proposed tonight is only to be given the same product that we currently have for another three years. I think it is an incredibly reasonable cost. They agreed to grandfather in, for lack of a better word, um, us at the current rate of our ILS without increasing costs across three years. I don't know a lot of technology vendors that will agree to do that. Um, and so we are going to have the current cost of our automation system for the next three years. And that should give staff um, and the library time to determine what our next steps are, which may involve re-signing with Innovative, which may involve um, uh, implementing and moving towards a consortium and migrating. That's a big piece of work. And so um, we need time to determine that. So. That is why I explored a three-year contract, and I just want to acknowledge Martha and Katie, um, who uh, helped guide some of these conversations, and um, ultimately we agreed on a three-year um, at the current rate, which I think is very, um, very positive for the library. Thanks, Renee. Questions, discussion? Can I add one more thing? Our lawyer has reviewed this in depth. There have been several back and forths between Innovative and the lawyer um, about this contract. And so I can say with clarity that our lawyer approves the board or um, supports the board's decision to approve this contract should that motion take place tonight. Um, it has the review and approval of our legal counsel. Is part of the approval process that we have to approve it a year in advance? Um, I think it's best so that we have it all and also for the budgeting process, we have to start, you know, budgeting as early as, um, well, soon. Um, so I think it's best to just have it tied up now. They sent me an email a couple of months ago, starting the conversation, asking, what do you want to do? Where do you want to move? Um, and so as we figured out what we wanted to do, we just thought, let's just put it in writing now so that we have it all set. And we know for the next three years, budget-wise, there won't be any increases. We can plan on that. Um, so that that helped okay. um, provide context, hopefully. Other questions or comments? 
it's crazy being in Arizona. Yes, this is a, um, there are only a few vendors nationally and internationally that create this type of very unique software. Um, I mean, it's for libraries to manage the database of users, to ensure patron privacy, to integrate both the back end of the bibliographic information for every item with the front end, which is the patron user experience. Um, so yeah, there are a few vendors out there and they're a very um, prominent one. But just when we started the contract 10 years ago, was there any that No, I have a, a amount, I have a schedule of cost increases across 10 years. Um, and that has been in that I'm assuming informed Eric's budgeting across the years. Um, because there was an increase from 22-23 to this current rate, which is 20, you know, 23-24. But now, I mean, my request was, can we stay at this rate? Um, and they agreed after some back and forth. What are the payment terms? Let's see them. Because I'm also thinking, okay, it's 22-5 a year. The year is our fiscal year, beginning May 2024. Did we have an invoice this month? We for did. It? We did. We did. Um, it was May. And so on the first page, it says fees. Payment terms are net 30. During the renewal process, after the initial term, we may see increases, yada, yada. Um, but we receive one invoice every year for the, full for the full year. And we pay at the beginning of the year before. We don't pay in the rears. We pay at the beginning before the year started. So we do have a payment to... Yes. If you go into the expenditures list... And you see under library automation, 90% of the budget is spent. That is because we issued the invoice for innovative. Library automation, 22.5, ding, ding, ding. There it is. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Right. Then the fact that we got the payment schedule on here, I know. that overwrites that. The yes, okay. yes. No, we're locking in, yeah. you know. I just have to say it was excellent customer service I got throughout the, their whole period or the whole process. Good to hear. Well, I'm an excellent negotiator. We're locking in at this price. Glad to do it. Any further comments or questions? Do I have a motion to accept the three year contract for Sierra and other software? From innovative. I'll motion to accept the contract. Hey, thank you, Bill. Please. I will second. second. Jamie as second. Mr. Roll call vote. Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Hayes. Aye. Trustee Dowdy. Aye. Trustee Berg. Aye. Trustee Graziano. Aye. Trustee Church. Aye. Trustee Freeman. Aye. Okay. And with that, as president, you will be the signee of the contract. And so now you tell me. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the board. Yeah. Um, so and this the contract that I have from Kathy, I have Kathy's signature from the previous tenure. Um, since it's beyond my authorization. Okay. No problem. <laughs> All right, we have another um, item, which is the benchmarking project. This is an action. This is not an action item for the board. It's an FYI. Right. It, yes, happy to. Um, we did discuss this at the HR committee as well. Um, and I am very pleased to tell you that um, we have entered into contract with HR Source for a benchmarking analysis and um, salary structure project. Um, as far as I know, the library has never had a, an analysis such as this by an outside vendor. HR Source is a very prominent vendor for this exact um, service for public libraries in Illinois. Um, previous libraries I've worked at who have done salary benchmarking projects, Deerfield and Glen Ellen, they worked with HR Source. Um, so a very reputable company. Um, what we are asking for with this project 
Um, and they quoted us saying it'll be approximately four weeks. I told the HR committee four to six, just, you know, you never know. Um, we They will be receiving a copy of every single one of our job descriptions, which you may remember um, the only job descriptions that we have currently are um, the directors, which is in review, and the um, the managers, which has been finalized as of the last fiscal year in the performance evaluations. In the meantime, all of the managers and I are working on finalizing those job descriptions with the deadline of November 1st, which is when this project is scheduled to begin. We issue HR Source the job descriptions. They review the scope of work, the responsibilities, the job titles, the pay, the pay um, minimum and maximum, and they compare it to industry standards. They compare it to um, what we talk about in HR is our peer libraries. We get to determine who our peer libraries are, and the committee is encouraging us to think geographically about our peer libraries, not just um, the size of our budget or the, the population size, but also considering that. Um, I believe you said geographically, people will drive a certain distance for jobs in this area. So salary wise, we should benchmark against a lot of our geographic peers. So we get to determine those peers. We also can say, well, you know, do we want this job to be compared to industry standards for non-library professions? So for example, one of our positions is um, adult services manager in technology. Um, technology positions in the field of technology and IT have a particular salary range right now. Um, and so because that work is comparable across industries, it's technology, IT, you know, the work itself is going to be compared to not just library, but if we want weighted to um, libraries, but also considering nonprofit or also um, for-profit work. Um, what we receive in the end is a um, salary structure schedule, which we don't have currently a minimum, a, me uh, a median, and then a maximum um, for each job description or each pay grade, each pay, pay scale. And so there's a recommendation for moving those job positions where they currently are in terms of salary. And then um, there's a final cost of what it would cost the organization if we were to move, you know, all of those positions based on what their recommendations are. They don't um, propose a, um, a plan to roll it out. That is something that the board can determine, the finance and HR, you know, along with, you know, my guidance, we will talk about that and determine based on what that final dollar amount is. Um, and at that point, we could decide phase rollout or do we roll out all in one year? Um, and so it's really important given inflation, given um, I, I, I think just cost of living increases and also the increases in the industry. Um, having been in libraries for 15, 16 years, I remember what I was getting paid at Deerfield when I started as a librarian and, and, and it has changed. Illinois is a reputable place for libraries. ALA is housed here, as you saw, we're a national, um, front runner in, in um, freedom to read and intellectual freedom legislation, people move to Illinois libraries to work here. So all of that to say, this is a really exciting project. Um, I think the fee is incredibly reasonable um, given that there is not capacity in my position or in the organization to be able to do this work internally. There are some public surveys that you can purchase and get all of the, the information about um, library salaries and the starts and the salaries, and there are libraries that do this internally, um, but I think the size of our organization, it's best if we consult and have someone do this for us and present it to the board. Um, so with that, happy to answer any questions um, about this proposal. Well, the proposal, um, it's a project, it's already moving forward, so I've signed the contract. Well, I will say that, um, in the previous eight years that I've been on the board, this has always been an issue, and it's it's something that uh, I personally have always supported um, bringing our salaries up to scale, and um, it's just for various reasons, 
drawers, whole budget and all of that. There, there are a lot of things that have happened, but um, it just hasn't been possible. And I really think it's time to prioritize that now. Um, so that being said, I, uh, uh, Renee presented to Jen and I, well, she just presented to you at our last HR meeting and uh, I'm very much in favor of doing this and eating what they have to say. I just have a feeling we're going to get our hands slapped in, but that's, yeah, that's okay. I, um, was at the HR committee meeting when Renee presented this as well. And I want to share two observations that I shared with the committee at the time. First is I've done projects like this before in my career. They've easily been a six figure cost. So this to me was very reasonable. Very reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, you know, we, we kind of focused on the timeline, which is page six of the project description. Um, I think the timing is great. We'll have enough runway to incorporate potential changes into the fiscal year 24, 25 budgeting. And because of various um, changes in staffing, a retirement, um, a, the resignation of a 10 year uh, director hiring of Renee, I think now is a great time for us to have some opportunity. Again, it might be in a phased approach. Um, I think now's a good opportunity to try to true up, if you will. So just to recap then, basically all, once all the job descriptions have done and completed, then 11-1 is kind of what your target is then to kick them off and everything is sort of based on that contract. Yeah. Correct, yes. And um, so there's a project kickoff meeting um, that is scheduled so that we can sit down and say, okay, this is what you need from the library. We will discuss, you know, how you want these job descriptions yeah. compared, um, the peer libraries and so forth. And so um, I I will be checking in with um, Catherine about a month ahead, or she'll check in with me, I assume, um, to schedule that and talk about the, the work itself. I also recommended when we reviewed the timeline, I said, I'd, I'd like to have um, representation of the finance committee at the readout, you know, at the, at the conclusion of the project, just so that it will um, help expedite, I think, any decision-making around the results. And so that is something that Matt, yourself, yeah. Bill. Yeah, because you think about the time, if you, you get mid-December is when you will get the results, then, Gives you time, another three, four months to before yeah. the, the February. Changes. Yeah, the, but it, it lines up. It lines up, there. and that is something that they include in the contract is that presentation to your upper leadership. But I think I think what we're I think we're doing the same that but I think we're going to find that there's going to be a gap that we're going to have to close, mm -hmm. and how we close that, we will probably have to have some discussion. Yeah. It may not be able to be done in one thing. All right. So I'd um, just like to say thank you for uh, the support of this. Any other comments or questions? All right. So we are on the library correspondence portion of the agenda. So this is a new section of the agenda that I hope will continue month to month. There are times where correspondence comes forth and it's really just a presentation to you all that is noteworthy. Um, so I envision, you know, um, a comment from a patron that is particularly glowing. You know, I would include this in um, library correspondence. Uh, this month, there are three items of note. Um, we received our official 2023 per capita grant um, as we applied last, well, no, it wasn't last year. It was earlier this year. Um, and the former board members remember the conversation we had about the book that we read and the chapters we discussed. So thank you all for doing that. And we received our um, per capita grant, which is uh, on target to what we were expecting given our population size, um, slight, ever so slight increase. And so this will be inputted into our financials so that we can um, plan ahead for that. Um, so I'm very happy about this. The next item in correspondence is the memo from our current legal counsel. Um, and you might remember Roger and Mark are the two Ritzman um, 
Ritzmans that are our lawyers. Uh, after the legislation passed at the Illinois State Library, um, for the Illinois State Library, uh, this memo was sent out a couple days later, talking about the requirements that each library needs to um, follow in order to be eligible and compliant, well, compliant with the law, and then also, by extension, eligible for per capita grants. And I just want to um, assure you that we are already compliant with the law. I believe I identified that in the email I sent you all, um, but this is the official memo that we received um, with a copy of the Bill of Rights um, for reference and an actual copy of this, the new statute. Um, so that policy is very strong and I think um, I'm glad that we refer back to uh, freedom, of read, freedom to read and American Library Association policies. And then the last item is a reminder, you are all invited to attend this Friday's event, um, opening of the Stro Room in celebration of our late former board member, Cal Stro, um, hosted by the Lake Bluff Public Library Foundation. That is Friday um, from two to four, remarks will be at 2.30. Um, I've talked to Kathy already. Um, I'll welcome people and then Kathy will um, invite, I believe, um, Father, um, a prominent religious figure in the family. Like the Don't like nations. No, I neither name, no, but someone um, close to the family to give a dedication, a non-denominational dedication. That will be quite the, the same person who spoke at Cal's service. Yeah. Oh, service. yes. Yeah. Um, and there will be delicious food catered by Heinen's, Heinen's and um, beautiful flowers from our Lake Bluff uh, Farmer's Market. Okay. Hope you all will be able to be there. Okay, we are up to any other business. We actually have three items on any other any other business. I apologize, I thought that we had this covered. So I think I'm gonna need a motion to amend any other business which may properly come from the board. Or do we just add those topics as they come? So what I'm thinking is the um, incident. Yes, you were going to give um, a summary of that, right. and that's just a. So do we info. have to? Do we have to? Do we have to amend the agenda to add the specific items for fourteen no. or not? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to clarify. Thank you. Do you want to go first with these, or I can do this one first? Um, I'll start with just this one. It's quite quick. Okay. Um, well, the first two. So uh, the last item in your packet is a um, reminder that we are still looking for trustees who are interested in participating and walking in the 4th of July Day Parade. Um, if you're interested and available, the whole family is welcome. There will be donuts, there will be coffee, Jill and I will be there. It'll be a glorious time. I'm very excited myself. It'll be my first 4th of July mm -hmm. here in Lake Bluff. I've heard it is quite a showstopper. Um, so I invite you all if you're interested. Um, the second item, um, we're also interested if you're looking to join us a little bit during the auto show this Saturday. So those, the information about those two items are in that um, form and expect a list like this for community engagement opportunities to be included in, um, in maybe in the August uh, packet for fall events too. Um, the next item uh, you all received via email notification that the Friends of the Library president has resigned, um, effective immediately, I'm told. Um, I already reached out to the Friends and said, um, would you like me to attend the July meeting? Would you, I have a donation request presentation, would you like me to give it? Or would you rather that be a working meeting? So while I normally ask for a board member to attend our friends meetings. I know Jenny, you're coming in September and October. Um, I would need someone for July, but at this time, given the uncertainty, I just wanna hear back from them if they still want the library to be a part of that. Um, and if so, then I would invite and encourage one of you to volunteer um, to come to that friends meeting. It is um, Friday, nope, Saturday, um, July. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Saturday, July 22nd at 11 in the morning here in the Spooth Room. 
Um, so if you're interested and available, send me an email and let me know. Um, the requirements are minimal. Uh, it would just be a quick update about some of the work that the board is um, doing and anything related to the friends. I think an update about the event, um, uh, the STRO event would be, you know, one of the possibilities of updates that could be shared at that time. Those are the two items of any other business I wanted to share. You could um, put me down for that. Jeannie, thank you. <coughs> I'll let you know if the meeting continues, if we're, if we're needed there and let me know. Thank you, Jeannie. Sure. Okay, so the last item under any other business that we know of, I think we open the floor again after this, is just to, to quickly recap the incident report that was mailed to all of you. Um, so any matters of, of discipline, suspension, whatever, um, we're keeping the individual's name um, private, if you will, for the library. I mean, library staff need to know. Um, so if there are a lot of detailed questions, we may need to move into executive session. So here's what happened. Um, there was, uh, it was Friday, there's an incident in the library where a patron violated our um, patron use policy in two ways. One, the individual was um, asking people for money, both adults and children. Um, and the individual um, also, without consent, made physical contact with a child. Um, and the team did an amazing job of quickly um, addressing the, these uh, concerning behaviors. Um, the individual has since been in communication with Renee as well as the individual's uh, caregiver and the individual has been suspended from the library for a period of six months and we have offered because the individual doesn't have a library card at this time we have said we'll figure if you would like a library card we figure out a way to remotely set you up with a library card so that you could still have access to the e-collections so you're suspended from the premises of the library um so again i think renee and the team did a, a very thorough job of getting multiple viewpoints of the incident that happened um writing up the report subsequent um discussion with the uh parent of the child um, as well as the individual um, who violated the user policy as well as the caregiver for that policy so very quickly in comparison to previous events um, and incidents this kind of has come to a pretty swift I think conclusion so and also has precipitated our um, desire to have an explicit um, patron suspension policy, right? And thus the um, special or emergency board meeting that's been called for tomorrow at eight to put that in, to make put more specifics around um, why a sus when, when a suspension would happen, uh, who has the authority to um, implements a suspension and uh, based on a uh, period of time that this that is felt it's warranted to have someone suspended from, from the premises or maybe from the library in its entirety. So questions or comments? It's very detailed. Thank you, Renee. Yeah, and and really, as as the draft policy states, Renee and I uh, reviewed it today. Um, putting the safety of our patrons, our staff, um, protecting our plant property and equipment, if you will, um, are are important, especially you know 
ensuring a safe environment for learning, for reading, et cetera. So um, those were sort of, that was kind of the North Star, if you will, around all the discussions and the eventual outcome. I would also just like to acknowledge Bonnie, not only your support throughout this, but um, Lake Bluff police are incredibly aware of the complexity of this individual situation. Um, and they have been incre incredibly supportive and helpful and transparent and communicative with me um, in all the conversations. So Officer Francois, Rob Francois, and um, the police chief, Matt Smizinski, um, I feel very comfortable stating, understand the unique qualities of this situation. And also we're very um, surprised that we didn't have a patron suspension policy, but very happy to hear that that will soon um, no longer be the case. Um, and they asked for a copy of the policy once it's um, approved and I gladly happy to share that with you. So police report, we have a very strong me individually have a very strong relationship with the police and it is quite positive so no questions or comments i'd be looking for a motion to adjourn a motion to adjourn thank you bill <laughs> oh, <just> a second. <laughs> all right all those in favor did we do that all those in favor uh nays abstains <laughs> matt have a great vacation Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. All right.